figure out all these things and all of these things first. <laughs> ben, sorry. <laughs> so thankful for technology. I'm going to leave the mic in the stand, and then I'm going to make sure I can do this. Yeah, I can. Let's see. <laughs> I'm going to have to stick to my paper quite a bit tonight, because I'm just talking about some new ideas that have come up for me, so I'm not quite as fluent as I am with some of my other stories that I tell. But today I wanted to talk to you guys about the Chapel of the Sacred Mirrors and permaculture as an art form. So. I'm just going to get right into it because it'll kind of explain itself as I go, go forward. So, I've always been drawn to nature and felt a strong connection with the nature spirits. As I received my creative flow in my late teens, nature is what truly inspired me to create, and I often use nature or the patterns of nature within my artwork. Recently, as I came onto the permaculture path, my main goal was to merge permaculture with art and make sustainable or regenerative creations that would not only look beautiful, but provide many functions in one's life. When I began my permaculture design course, it seemed that there was a school of thought surrounding permaculture and having nothing to do with aesthetics and everything to do with having the most efficient systems. So I asked myself, can we have both? Can the most efficient systems not also be the most beautiful? Since, since I had been creating from nature and using nature's inherent wisdom as inspiration in my art for a long time, I knew that this had to be true. As a person who holds creativity at the core value in my life, it is part of my mission to help others see the true value of art. But before that can happen, we must first understand what art and creativity truly are. We often think of art as a painting, a sculpture, a poem, or a song. But what is the true meaning of art? Here are a couple of definitions. So these are dictionary definitions, just so you guys know. So two of the definitions I found were the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination, typically in a visual form, producing works to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional power. And then the second one was works produced by such skill or imagination. Most people see the sculpture, read a poem, or sit in the everyday flower garden and easily see art. But what about a mathematical equation, a science experiment, veggie garden, or forest garden? If we view the definitions above, does it not become apparent that many of these things could be considered art? The mathematician spends countless hours figuring out the math of the universe, of what everything, of what everything is and how it works. Does this take practice? Does this evoke emotion or appreciation? I would say yes. So can this not be considered art? <clears throat> oh, sorry, I was supposed to like, show that one before. Um, when creating the ecological garden, we must take time to observe our system and to understand what is happening internally and externally. We design from nature and work with it rather than against it. This takes a lot of wisdom and dedicated practice in understanding what it is that nature is telling us and what nature is teaching us. It can take infinite hours to figure out how to best design a great system, and then it takes mass amounts of different skills to implement such a system. When the practice and dedication align with the skill to implement are combined, a permaculture system will always be aesthetic and beautiful. In other words, it will be art. I have learned in my short time in permaculture that I was off base in thinking that art and permaculture could be merged. I know now that permaculture is art in and of itself. When I think of permaculture, I don't necessarily think of solar panels, farms, or gardens. I think of nature, community, connections, resilience, empowerment, compassion, creativity, and building legacies for future generations to come. Permaculture recognizes the intrinsic relations between all living things and non-living things, and it translates these relationships into living landscapes and ecological systems. It is not just a technique, it is a practice, and it takes much creativity, imagination, and divine vision to create the most resilient, 
abundant, and intrinsically beautiful systems, which is by definition creating art, and in my opinion, visionary art. Sorry, this was down the slide. <laughs> Buckminster Fuller said, when I'm working on a problem, I never think about beauty. I think only how to solve the problem. But when I have finished, if the solution is not beautiful, I know it is wrong. My personal mission is to spread the art and wisdom of permaculture to Calgary and beyond through the creation of ecological systems, regenerative art, and creative education. Creativity and imagination are invaluable in implementing systems and in educating others with visionary information that will help to make our world a much better and more beautiful place. If we continue to practice permaculture, its ethics and principles, we will naturally create resilient art in each and everything that we do. Our entire world will become a vibrant landscape of innovation, beauty, and creativity. Our entire world will become art. The above recognition and realization came to me when I recently visited Cosm, the Chapel of the Sacred Mirrors, to take part in the first part of a visionary permaculture design course. Cosm is located about 90 minutes outside of New York City in the beautiful Hudson Valley. This is just a picture here of, of the land, and this is the guest house um, or communal house where they have most of their events and places for guests to stay. I first heard of Cosm when I was blessed to take a visionary arts intensive with Alex and Allison Gray in 2009. When I first met Alex and Allison, I was amazed at their humility and grace, as well as their love and dedication of art. I was amazed at, oh sorry. During my time with them, they gifted me an experience of truly opening my artist's eye and connecting with divine vision. They helped me to understand my infinite potential to create one of the greatest gifts we can ever allow ourselves to receive. When Alex and Allison spoke about Cosm and their mission to build an enduring sanctuary of visionary art to inspire every pilgrim's creative path and embody the values of love and evolutionary wisdom, I knew that I had to go there. Spreading creativity, art, and love to others, especially in a spiritual way, was something I held close to my heart and to my soul. What Alex and Allison were trying to do was awe-inspiring and set me on the path that I am on today. I left Cortez Island and continued on with my life, and in 2011, I began to feel called to the cause of land. In January, I decided I would go to Cosm in the fall to volunteer, but then towards the spring, I decided I would go to Burning Man instead. <laughs> In December, I felt the calling again and decided that I would put it out there to go sometime in 2012. No idea how that was going to happen. Shortly after, in the middle of January, I saw the post for the Visionary Permaculture course, taught by Delvin Sulkinson, a dedicated visionary in the permaculture and art world. The course would take place at Cosm, and I decided I had to go. This was the perfect way that I could contribute to the cause of land and continue on the path of my permaculture passion. I had no idea how it was all going to come together, I just knew I had to be there. And within one month, I had it all sorted out, was enrolled, and with my first flight purchased for the first part, or sorry, for part one of four in May. The moment I arrived, it was as though I had been there before and instantly I was inspired by the energy of the land. It was dark outside, so I couldn't see much, but it didn't matter. Once inside the beautiful common space, I could immediately feel the love and intention that went into the placement of each and every sacred element on the altars, walls, and bookshelves. And I knew I was just where I was supposed to be. On the first day of class, I met the rest of our Visionary Learning Guild, and as we shared the stories of our lives with one another, I saw the shining reflections of all of us in all of us. And as the week continued on, it became apparent to me that people don't just show up at Cosm, people are called there. 
There was a constant murmur from the land, sending vibrational messages to each of us, allowing us to receive that, or uh, allowing us to realize that Cosm is a sacred space of healing, growth, and intention. The Chapel of the Sacred Mirrors is not just a sacred, or just not a space for the exhibition of an art series, but literally a place of sacred mirrors where your third eye is pried open. Your heart is shining brightly, and you see aspects of yourself reflected in each and every being on the land. There is no running from who you are, and no avoiding your true nature. Beauty radiates infinitely, love flows freely, and self-expression is inevitable. Cosm is a place where nature speaks to you, visions flow into you, and pure magic happens. I imagine Cosm calls on people for many different reasons. I know one of my reasons for being there is to connect more deeply with the nature spirits and help the Visionary Learning Guild to map the amazing land for future generations to come. For whatever reason you may be called to Cosm, you will leave inspired and more connected to your creative path than ever before. Creativity is inherent in each of us and the ability to express the love of our art in its truest form is what fulfills us. Cosm shows you only who you truly are, ignites the flame of love within, and encourages the practice and dedication that allows the expression of pure art effortlessly. I say that Cosm brought me home, that is, home to my heart, to my infinite love, and the glowing vision gifted from the divine. Spaces like the Chapel of the Sacred Mirrors are so valuable and precious in aiding the evolution and shift of consciousness for all of humankind. Although Alex and Allison have yet to build the chapel that they envision, they are definitely doing an amazing job of fulfilling their mission. Alex and Allison, along with the Cosm staff and amazing volunteers, prove that with dedication, love, and practice that you can truly express your passions which inherently create beautiful art. I can only imagine the power that the sacred land will have once the chapel is created. So this is a picture here of what Alex and Allison have envisioned for the chapel of the sacred mirrors to look like once it's built. If everyone could connect deeply with themselves, their creativity, love of what they do, and then dedicate themselves to sharing this with the world, we would all be amazing artists. This is what Cosm is working to help each of us do. If you're interested in helping Cosm continue and aiding in the building of the chapel, there are many ways that you can contribute. These can include becoming a Cosm member, subscribing to the Cosm Journal, which is amazing and beautiful by the way, purchasing items from the Cosm store, volunteering at Cosm or simply donating. And then this is the website here if uh, any of you are interested in checking it out. Um, that's all I have. If you have any questions, let me know. I also, if you guys are interested in my full-on experience that I had while I was at Cosm during the Visionary Permaculture Course or part one of it, I have a blog. And I can never remember the address, but it's called An Inspired Mind is a Mind that Inspires. So you can Google that and find me and read my blog for more info. Is that .blogspot.com? I think so, yeah. Okay, so it's An Inspired Mind is a Mind that Inspired dot .blogspot.com. Dot dot .com. <laughs> Not very technology friendly. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments or anything about Cosm or... Culture. Sorry? That's a yeah, this is his, this is the website for the organization, the Chapel of the Sacred Mirrors. So just so you guys know, the Chapel of the Sacred Mor Mirrors is a not-for-profit organization. What else can you do? Sorry? What else can you do? Well, basically, you can become a member of the Chapel of the Sacred Mirrors. You can purchase online things from the online store that will. Sorry. What is part two? What is part two is in September. Okay. So I, I get to be here the whole summer and then I will be going back in September and then November and February. 
how did this, how did the, uh, the visionary part of the permaculture affect your life and work as an artist? Ooh, that's a really good question. Um, I think that basically for me, being at Cosm and doing the visionary permaculture there just really allowed for me to open up my mind's eye and get a new perspective on permaculture and how it might be able to more deeply affect change within the world and within myself too. Um, allowing permaculture to um, teach me to connect more deeply with myself too and just I think not be afraid to go out there and do some more in the words well it's not Toby Hemingway's words it's one of his friends but he said go out there and do epic shit yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like you know we are visionaries and we can do anything and not hold ourselves back from being able to make even bigger changes than we already imagined that we could do so it's kind of opened me up to just thinking bigger too with what I might be able to do and share with the world. Um, and yeah, just even more so believing that permaculture really is one of the ways that we're going to save the entire world, I think, anyway. <laughs> so. Permaculture epic shit. Yeah. <laughs>